Excellent. So we have hit the noon Eastern, 11 Central time frame. We could go ahead and do Mountain and Pacific as well, but I think you know what it is. My name is Brian Cox, and I am so thankful you guys decided to join us today. I am the President and Chief Innovations Officer here at Blaze Performance Solutions. Uh, the way that we are doing this today is that we are live streaming from Zoom so we can show you guys some content, some slides that we have. So I will not be able to personally answer the questions that you might have. However, if you have any, please still put them in the chat because we have our CEO, Kent Vaughn, our Chief Operations Officer, uh, David Williams, and our Vice President of Sales for North America, Steve Robinette, uh, that are monitoring the chat on the Facebook Live. So thank you guys again so much for joining us today. I'm going to go ahead and get started and, and talk a little bit about who we are and why we're here. So at Blaze Performance Solutions, we really focus in on three key pieces, which is to learn, execute, and achieve. And to narrow that and make it a little easier, we do micro learning and we do execution, two very big important pieces that we handle. And we have this slide up that says our 2020 vision is to bridge the gap between strategy and results. And today we're going to be talking about working from home or working remotely with excellence. Now, we're obviously doing this because there's a great need. Uh, we're going to look at some stats here a little bit about why we're doing this, one of the big pieces, because there is a huge need right now in the world, and we'll say, you know, the entire world, literally, with what's going on with uh, the coronavirus. But this is content that we've been doing for quite a while. We just feel that right now there's going to be a huge amount of people that are going to have a need to hear this. And we wanted to make sure that we are adding value to the world. And one of the ways we can do that is helping people who are transitioning from working in a typical office environment to working within the confines of their own home. So let's go ahead and get started with this concept, the working remote with excellence content. And what we're going to be looking at and what you can expect today is key three. With all the learning that we do and all the training that we do, we typically focus on three keys that are really important. And we do it as fast as possible, give you what you need in order to be able to go and then apply it. And this is, our, this is what we really focus on, right, is application. So learning is great. Having the knowledge is wonderful. But if you don't apply it, it's not really helping you. So we want to give you the tools that you need and three easy steps to be able to work remotely with excellence. And here are our key three. Number one, start the day strong. So we want to make sure that you're starting your day. It's a big indicator of how the rest of your day will go, right? So we're going to show you how to start the day strong. Number two, plan with intention. We're going to talk about how do you plan your day effectively with this change of working from home. And then we're going to talk about setting boundaries for work and home. Now, this is one that's going to be very important for a lot of folks, whether you have worked remotely before or whether you haven't. Boundaries are going to be very, very important. And I would say as we look at boundaries, it'll also be communication. So why are we really talking about this? Well, before I go to the next slide, I want to tell you a stat. So at the end of last year, it was stated that about 4.6% of Americans telecommute or work remotely. Okay, 4.6%. Right now in the United States, it is estimated that it is going to go up to 30% of all employees in the United States that they'll be working from home over the next three months. Now think about that. 4.6%, now it's going to be 30%. So this is a huge, huge opportunity for people to be able to work from home, which is excellent. And a lot of people have probably wanted this for a long time, and now they're going to have the opportunity. However, much like the dog that caught the car, is it going to be too much to, to, to handle? Because it is very different. Now, for myself, I've worked remotely now for a little over a decade. And I know that my business partner, Kent Vaughn, he's done it for over 25 years. David Williams has done it for at least 15 years. And Steve Robin has done it for, I think, over 15 as well. And so we have a wealth of experience in doing this. And we're going to talk about the real life issues that come with working from home. And so when we start off quickly, with starting the day strong. So how do you control your day from the beginning? Now, if you can set yourself up for success in the morning, this can help indicate your success throughout the rest of the day. And so we're going to do this by giving you four key tips to be able to successfully work remotely by starting the day strong. Number one, we're going to talk about your routine. Number two, we're going to discuss dressing for success. Number three, we'll talk about maintaining regular hours. And number four, we're going to talk about creating your space. So let's start with routine. So the routine, it's important to start your day with a solid routine. And what we would typically say is it's time to really act as if though it's your typical work day. Set your alarm, make sure you're getting up at the right time, your typical morning rituals. In fact, let's discuss it this way. 
whenever you go into an office environment, typically if you are packing your lunch, you'll either get up in the morning and do it, or you might have meal prepped the night before, right? So you get up in the morning, you get ready, shower, et cetera, get you know, all of your morning ritualistic things done, and then you go off for your commute and you get to the office. And then you're in the office from, let's just say, nine to five. Whenever you work from home, this routine changes heavily because you don't have to pack lunch. You don't have to you know, get all your things ready. You don't have to do all those things. However, research tells us that people who are working remotely, if they get up and they follow a similar routine to as if they were going into an office, then what would happen is that they would actually have very much the same results as they would in an office environment. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for, to a degree, replication, if not looking to actually have improved results from home. In order to do that, we start off with the routine. So everyone's routine is different. I have a routine that I've maintained for a long time, and mine is I wake up, very first thing, I go to the shower, then I have coffee, brewing while I'm doing that, and then I get up, I have a cup of coffee, I do some reading, and then I get up, and then I actually start my day. And that's my routine. Now, here's the thing. That works for me. What works for you might be very different. And I brought up the lunch thing and packing lunches. This is another important piece. Working from home gives you opportunity, especially if you like to cook like I do, to be able to take an hour, hour and a half, two hours just to cook a nice lunch or a nice meal during the day. However, what that does is that changes the productivity dynamic of your day. It used to be that you would just make a salad, make a sandwich, put it into a box, you go, or maybe you'd order in food, something like that. Working from home gives you additional opportunities, additional choices, right? With additional choice comes the potential to reduce your productivity. So you want to try to streamline your routine as much as possible. Have a routine, stick with it, and continue on as you normally would. And what you'll find is this, is if you have a routine, you find one that works for you, you can easily increase your productivity throughout the day while working from home. Next, what we talk about is dressing for success. And again, we bring in research on this because this is one that I fought personally for a long time. Uh, I wanted to, you know, I could work just as well in my pajamas as I could, you know, in my business casual attire. However, the research tells us this from uh, Pelletier and Carl, that participants who were in this study reported feeling more authoritative, trustworthy, and competent when they were wearing their business attire while working at home. What that tells us is this, is that the way that you dress, the way that you look, will have an impact on the way that you feel. The way that you feel will have an impact on your behaviors and actions. And your actions have an impact on your results, right? It's a typical circle there. And so as we look to our working from home situation and, you know, if we're going to have a routine, we also want to make sure that we are dressing for success. Now, for you, that might be business casual. It might be jeans and a t-shirt. might be, uh, you know, a full, full suit if you want, I suppose. However, you have to make sure that you are indicating to yourself. It's almost like a, a psychological trigger that says, when I get dressed for this, it is time for work. And so it puts yourself psychologically into a state where you can more effectively ease into the workday as opposed to just saying, oh, well, I'm still just lounging around in my PJs. It'll be fine. I'll just get to it whenever I can. Now, this is not to say, and I like to always be honest in all the trainings, are there days where, yes, I work for my PJs? Yes, it has absolutely happened. However, I have found something for myself. Whenever I do such, it does actually lower my excitement for work frankly. I think it lowers my productivity. Whenever I get up, I manage my day, I get going, I get dressed, I sit down on my desk, and I start working. That is whenever I am at my most productive. So we've had routine, we've had dress for success. Now we talk about maintaining regular work hours. So what we really mean by this is setting a schedule that works for you. Now, different people are most productive at different times. For me, Personally, I found myself at many times working very late. I was very productive when it was very late. Now, part of that is due to my personal life situation. I have three children, four and under. And so during the day, working from home, you know, if they're not in school, uh, it is a madhouse if I'm not cautious, right? And so what I've had to do, and we'll talk about how do you actually put barriers uh, in that for your family and actually set boundaries for that. But one of the things I found is that instead of me staying up really late and working, if I maintain regular work hours, again, I become more productive. Basically due to the fact that what I was doing is I was staying up late till two in the morning trying to get work done. And then I would try to wake up early because I had things to do with the family or had to handle something in the morning. I'm going on low sleep. So once you start going on four hours sleep for about a month or so, it starts to really, really, and actually more than three days, it will reduce 
your productivity. And again, what we're talking about here is not just productivity, but effectiveness. Can you effectively work from home just like you did when you effectively worked in the office? So maintaining regular work hours is a set of schedule. So for some people that might be, typically you would wake up at 6, 6.30, whatever it might be, get up, do your day, maintain a regular work schedule. And in part number three today, or in the third key, we're going to talk about what that looks like to set the boundaries of time with those people that might be in the house with you so that you can actually have regular work hours that are also effective and productive. So we've talked about routine, talked about dress for success, maintaining regular work hours. The fourth key is this, and this is a big one, create your space. Now, as it says, working in bed might sound fun, but research shows us that you're definitely more effective when you are setting up a dedicated space to work. Now, it could be a desk, might be a table, might be a couch, or yes, it might even be your bed if that is where you feel most effective whenever you are working. However, you have to be conscious and make conscious decisions about this. And what we're really saying here is for some people, they might have a dedicated office in their home. If you do, that's probably an ideal place to work. You can kind of seal yourself off. You can be there. For me, I don't actually have a dedicated office space. Typically for me, I have a dedicated room in the house. It's going to be the upstairs living room. And in that room, we have a couch. I have a table that actually pulls up to me so I can work from there. That's how and where I work most effectively. And during my work hours, that is my space. And so whenever I go to that space with my laptop, with my headphones, going into work in that area, I know, again, it's another psychological clue or trigger to tell myself it is work time. And by doing this, it allows me to get rid of some of the distraction, not be focused on other things, not try to just relax and be, uh, you know, laying down in bed. I cannot work from a bed. I, I can say I cannot do it. Uh, <laughs> it just does not work for me. And so for me, it is a couch. For my partner, David, he has a, an office. For my partner, Kent, he has an office as well. And so by being able to go in there, seal yourself off from the rest of the world, psychologically clue yourself into that this is time to work, you can then become more productive, more effective by working from home. So the first key that we've talked about today is starting the day strong. So let's think about this before we move forward. To start the day strong, you have to have a routine and you gotta figure out what works best for you. Make sure that you're taking the time, get dressed for success. Put on the clothes that you would think to also psychologically trigger you into working effectively. Maintain regular work hours, meaning set the schedule and actually go with that schedule, follow the schedule and then create your own work space. By creating this workspace, what happens is that you are able to then have all the things that you need to be able to work from home productively and effectively. So let's move forward into the second key. The second key is to plan with intention. Now, planning with intention, what we really mean here is that just to be aware that you are making decisions. And by planning with intention, you are looking at what is the most important things in your work, in your life, to be as effective as you possibly can. And we're going to do this via a couple different things. We're going to start with the concept of planning the work and working the plan. And we have three steps for you to be able to do this. And then we're going to give you a nice tool to be able to utilize this in the future as well. So we have a methodology that starts with pause. Okay. Pause is this. So whenever you're trying to figure out and plan your day, we recommend that you get away from people for a little bit. Okay. Have a moment of silence, if you would. And yes, we even say take time to breathe. Now, research also tell us that uh, if you start taking a few deep breaths, so typically say 10 deep breaths, and what that does, it's not about reciting a mantra, it's about oxygenating your bloodstream. As you oxygenate your bloodstream, that blood flows to your brain, the brain is very sensitive to oxygen, and so as you start to oxygenate your brain, you actually start to think clearer. So by taking the time to pause, it allows you to think clearer, not be in a reactive mindset where you're just trying to get all the things done, it puts you into a proactive mindset where you can actually focus on the most important thing. After we pause, we then prioritize. And this is about writing down all of the tasks that need to be completed and place them in an order of importance. And what we mean there is this. Every day, you're going to have a lot of things that need to get done. Some of them are going to be very important things. Some of them are going to be smaller things. And while you're working at home, your two lives blend. So you might have to make lunch for the kiddos because they're not in school now. You might have to get some laundry done. You might have to take a couple of work calls. You might have some emails you have to do. You might have a project you're working on. There's gonna be all of these different things that are going on in your life. And in order to be most effective, you need 
need to take the time to be able to uh, prioritize all of the most important things in your life. Okay? So here's how you do it. Pretty simple. You, you stop, you pause, you breathe, you're thinking proactively, you write all of them down, and then you can start actually putting them in importance. So what's the number one thing you need to do today? Well, I have to prepare for a presentation with this person. Fine. I have to do these other five things. Excellent. Whatever they might be, but actually make a prioritized list. Not just a list, a prioritized list. So if we pause, take time to breathe, become proactive, we prioritize, we have a list of great things. The third thing is about moving to action, and that is pursue. It's about start working on priority number one and focus on the most important, not just being busy. What we know is that busyness is not productivity. Getting the most important things done in your life, that is the essence of productivity and effectiveness, and that's what we do. Once you have proactively thought through it, you've written it down, you have prioritized, you have a roadmap for success for your day. So you start with number one, the most important thing, and then you can go through the rest of your day and just start checking, checking off each thing down the list. And if you were to have a list of the most important things to do in a day, and you were to check it off, would you feel pretty productive at the end of that day? Yeah, I, mean, I would say that you probably would, right? That's the dream. That's what we're all looking for. And this is a simplistic three-step method to getting it done. So pause, prioritize, and pursue. Now, as I promised, I was going to give you a tool set, a tool to be able to utilize for this. Now, this is called the Eisenhower Decision Matrix, right? So President Eisenhower uh, developed this and utilized this whenever he was president of the United States. And it's very simplistic. And you've probably seen it before, but I just want to highlight it because this is a tool you can utilize to understand prioritization within your day. There are four basic quadrants, quadrants one, two, three, and four. We didn't go into a lot of trouble in naming them, right? Just one, two, three, and four. I'm going to start at quadrant one, and I'm going to go in a clockwise fashion. So I'll go Q1, three, four, and then two. And it's purposefully, just so you're aware that I'm not just skipping around. Quadrant one. And by the way, we'll say this. There's two axes. Okay, the vertical axis, up and down, is that of importance. The higher it is, the higher the importance. The lower it is, the lower the importance. On the horizontal axis, the farther to the left, the higher the urgency. The farther to the right, the lower the urgency. So we have this combination of importance and urgency. So again, quadrant number one. Quadrant number one is that of amazing importance and urgency, right? It's high importance. It's high urgency. These are things that need to be done now. The example there, the house on fire, right? <laughs> Absolutely, the house is on fire. That is important and urgent. You have to handle it now. It might also be something like your uh, direct leader gives you a, a, a phone call and says, hey, I need you to handle this right now. That is going to be important and urgent. You have a sick child. That is going to be important and urgent. These are things that as you are prioritizing, if it is important and urgent, they need to be done and they need to be done right now. So by having them done right now, that can prioritize, get them through for you. So you can get those done and off of your plate, okay? The problem with Q1 is this, is, and by the way, I follow a, a financial guru who lives here uh, near where I do in, in Middle Tennessee. His name is Dave Ramsey. And Dave Ramsey is a financial guy. And Dave talks a lot about investing and getting a return on your investment. And one of the things that I've always talked about whenever we look at this matrix is the investment of time right? The return on your time investment. Whenever you spend time in quadrant one, you get a return on your investment of time, but it's about equal to what you put in because there's a, there's a downside to living in this first quadrant. And the downside is that of stress. Whenever you're constantly urgent, you're rushing and you're just frantic. Yes, you're getting things done. Yes, they're important, but at what cost, right? And we'll see here in a minute that many times the things that, are, that wind up in this first quadrant they started somewhere else, but through procrastination, they became urgent. They weren't always necessarily urgent. So just think about that from an investment of time that perhaps it's not always the best place to live. It sounds good. It's important and urgent, but it may not be the best long-term strategy for where you want to be. Now, let's go down to Q3. Q3 is that of low importance, but still high urgency. And so this might be someone else uh, sends you a message, says, hey, I didn't get this done. Could you help me real quick? And it's very urgent because they need it, but it doesn't necessarily have a high importance level for you. 
right? Or to your goals or to the organization's goals. There's just a sense of urgency around it. Sometimes our cell phones fall into this, right? Have you ever felt your cell phone buzz and you just have this, this almost inborn reaction? Like you just have to see what it is. It feels really urgent, but it's probably just another text message from Joanne Fabrics telling me that I signed up with them by accident for my wife like five years ago and they're telling me there's a sale, right? And so this is where we need to really start thinking about and discerning our time and saying, is this really something that needs to be done now or can I put it off? Does it need to take my immediate time or is this something that I need to push off and say, yes, I can absolutely help you if you can wait until 2 p.m. because I'm working against a very urgent deadline at this moment. So I just want to be cautious with that and having the conversation. Q3 is a great place to be able to start asking questions. Am I doing the right thing at this moment? So back to the time investment piece. With Q3, typically what we find is you get a lower return on your time investment, meaning you're still working urgently. It's stressful. It's a lower importance level, so it's not building up as much as it needs to be. So you're putting in time, effort, energy, and stress, but you're not getting back out of it what you really need in order to move your goals forward. Now. Q4, quadrant four is that of low importance and low urgency. This is escape. That's what this is. Typically, we find that whenever people live a very high urgency life, so they spend a lot of time in quadrant one and three, at the end of the day, they are burned out. And so whenever they burn out, what typically happens then is that they try to zone out. And so by zoning out, what they do is that they spend time doing things that are not helping them build their goals. And so really what we mean there is, it might be from a work perspective, oh, I'm just going to uh, I'm just gonna go in my email for a while. You don't really have a purpose for it. You're just going to go and start you know, trivializing or, or sorting your emails. Or it might be uh, unnecessary planning, right? You already have your day planned. You're going back through it again. It might be, if you look from a personal perspective, at the end of the day, it might be watching five hours of Netflix. And I've heard people tell me, Brian, no one does that. Yes, yes, they do. I have done it before because I know myself. Whenever I overstress, whenever I overwhelm, I withdraw. And this is the quadrant of withdrawal. Whenever someone is just so overwhelmed that they just have to step out of everything and escape. And so be cautious here because the return on your time investment here is nothing. In fact, after spending time in quadrant four, what we typically find is that people have more stress than they started with because they were procrastinating on something of higher importance. So we don't want to go there. Quadrant two. Quadrant two is this magic quadrant of sorts. It's, it's, it's high importance, but low urgency. And so this gives us the, the ability to be able to plan, be purposeful, be strategic. This is about learning and growing ourselves. These are things that need to be done, but they don't have to be done today. And what that allows us to do is give our best to it, give the time it takes to be highly successful in completing that task or whatever it might be. So say that you're working on a major project and it's due in three weeks. Yes, you can get it all done the night before. And we've seen people do that. In fact, some people say, I get my best work done in the last minute. However, what they really mean is they get some of their most fulfilling work done in the last minute. And they say that because you actually have this you know, uh, physiological response to it. You actually start getting hits of adrenaline and dopamine whenever you're doing things in the last minute because you're rushed. And at the end, you feel, ah, you feel freedom and relief from it. But how many times have you done something like that? And you said, man, I wish I would have done that. Oh, I wish I would have changed this. I wish I would have done this. You wish you would have given more time, effort, energy, and thought to it. And that's because it should have been placed in quadrant two, where you were planning for it, being strategic and purposeful to make sure you were doing the right things. So let's talk about time investment. The return on your time investment in quadrant two is that of exponential greatness, like over and above all abundance you can think of because you are giving your best to things. The most important things are getting your highest and greatest attention. And you're not operating under stress. That's the power of this. And so I mentioned something earlier I'll do a callback to. Sometimes things start off in quad, or some things end up in quadrant one, right? And it's stressful, and it's urgent, but it was important. Many times those things started off in quadrant two. We could have planned. We could have been purposeful. We could have been strategic. But instead of doing that, what we did is that we procrastinated. We put it off. We let other things, less important things get in the way. And slowly over time, it starts to creep into quadrant one until it is in a fire that we have to put out an emergency we have to handle. And that is whenever we're not using our time effectively. Now, we talk about this in working from home because you have a new work environment, meaning you're going to have to grow and change your skills in order to be most effective. So you need to think about these things from this perspective. 
what are the things that are not important in your life, in your work from home life, that you need to start putting off or getting rid of, meaning they are quadrant three or quadrant four activities. What can you get rid of out of that area? If it's not as important, you do not want to give up the important for the less important. Just like from the, the wonderful book by Jim Collins, Good to Great, um, the enemy of the great is the good. Sometimes people say, what's well, good enough, so they don't reach for greatness. Same thing goes with importance in your life, is that if you are giving up the most important for a less important, that is a problem. And so what we do is, this, is we, we typically would take people through a scenario in which they would say, hey, what can you get rid of for how long? Very specifically, can you reduce 30 minutes of unnecessary meeting, unnecessary emails, unnecessary whatever it might be in your life, and then replace that with a quadrant two activity, meaning I'm going to replace that with 30 minutes of making a strategy for myself and my, my team to be more effective in this transition working from home or ensuring that we have open communication lines where everyone feels you know, still valued by the culture of our organization in this time frame. And so being thoughtful and purposeful with your time to focus on the most important. And so with that, that is how we plan with intention. Again, we pause, we prioritize, and we pursue. And the best way to prioritize is to utilize something like the Eisenhower matrix to ensure that you are focused on the most important thing and not just getting caught up in everything. Because remember, you cannot be everything to everybody all the time. So that leads us into being everything to, <laughs> to everybody all the time, right? Setting boundaries for work and home. Now, for some people, this is going to be a new concept. Pairing together work and home. And in many ways, this can be difficult. But one of the things that you have to make sure you do is keep work with work as much as you can and home with home as much as possible. Now, we are very sensitive to the concept of working from home with families and that we believe at Blaze Performance Solutions that your life is a, is a full organic circle if you want, right? You have your work life, you have your personal life, you have your own, you know, your own things for you that need to be taken care of, your, your, your needs. And so your, if your work life starts to struggle, it will affect your home life. If your home life starts to struggle, it will affect your work life. And so we have to understand that we, are, we have a balance here. And while many people don't care for the term work-life balance, I've, I've kind of started using a new term that a friend of mine gave me. Um, and so shout out to Rena on this, by the way, if she's on the, the message today, but it's about work-life harmony. How can you have harmony between your work and your home? And if you want to work from home effectively, you need to be able to find a way to harmonize these two. And you also have to understand that you may have to be flexible with it. It's hard to have a, a, a cut and dried, this is, I will work from nine until five and that is it and no one may bother me. That doesn't work in my life. That's not real world, right? Try telling a two and a half year old, no, I can't read you a book right now. Okay, it's difficult. Or maybe they have a, they, they fall and they have a boo-boo. It has to be handled, right? Sometimes daddies just have to handle things. Sometimes mommies just have to handle things. Sometimes you just have to be there, right? And so with that, you have to understand there has to be a level of flexibility to it. Now, in creating this harmony that we have, we have really focused in on a couple of different key things. and. What we are, we feel like we are probably the best in the world at is talking about things like execution. And so we've actually taken three of our keys of execution. In fact, we, I'll just say real quick, we wrote a book last year called The Three Keys of Execution. And this book was recognized by Inc. Magazine as one of the top seven books for the summer of 2019 uh, that can impact your life. And so what we have done is that we have said, hey, let's take execution as a concept and let's transition it into how people work from home effectively. And so today, we're going to talk to you about these three keys and how they can actually help you to put boundaries in for your work and life. And I'll tell you, there is a major over, um, uh, not underlying, it's a major factor in this. I don't even have a word for it it's so big. And that is communication. Communication is going to be extremely vital to you having a harmony with work and home. And so I'm talking about working and communicating with your work, communicating with your family. So let's dive in to these three keys. Key number one is simplicity. Simplicity means what is my goal? Why are we doing this? And what's my contribution? Now, let's think about this from the work perspective. We want to make sure that we're having these conversations with our peers, our teams, our leaders, if we have direct reports as well, in saying, hey, let's make sure we all know the goal. Now, there's an obvious goal. The goal is to work from home effectively, right? But you're going to have additional goals. What are the projects, priorities at work that need to be handled? Make sure that everyone is clear on the goal and that it's simple enough to be able to easily achieve. Not so easy to achieve, but easily uh, direct attention to, right? Why are we doing this? 
the why from why we're working at home is obvious. There's there's an epidemic going around the world, and we're trying to maintain productivity while we're doing it. Uh, that's obvious. The why we're doing other goals in our work life might be very different. Why are we creating this project? Well, because this is a revenue generator, because this is going to help our clients be more effective. It's going to help us. Depending on your position, the why is something you need to make sure that everyone is clear on. The reason this is so important, by the way, humans need to know the why. The why is vital to them buying into it. So if we're trying to get people to do things and do them effectively and with greatness, they need to know why they are doing it. And the next thing that people really need to know and communicate is my contribution. People need to know that what they're doing is actually adding to the goal. It's adding and benefiting to the overall uh, 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 needs of the organization, right? Now, let's flip this. Now we're talking simplicity at home. Simplicity at home, what is the goal? The goal is, to, again, to be able to work from home effectively. And depending on your, life work, uh, your home life situation, maybe you're at home alone or with just you know, uh, a partner or a spouse uh, or significant other of some form. That might be a little easier to work from home. Or you might be like me, and you have you know, a house full of children running around all the time. And so for me, I have to make sure that I'm very effective at communicating the needs and the goals for me to be able to work from home effectively. And that is I have to have time to work. I have to have a quiet space in order to take certain calls with clients. I need these things. And why are we doing this? The why we're doing this is another great conversation to have between those in your family life. I'm doing this because this is a necessity right now for work. And this gives me the opportunity to blend my work and my home life and to harmonize it. But by being able to do this, it's going to mean that I'm here, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm available. And my, one of my business partners, Dave Williams, he had a, a great uh, story about this. And I forget the exact phrasing he used. And I hate that. Maybe he'll put that in the chat if he can hear me. Um, but it's the concept of are you available uh, versus being present, right? There, there's kind of the, that dichotomy there. And so we need to let people know when we are actually available. Versus whenever we're home, but not really able to be present. Okay. And then my contribution. This contribution piece is really stating what you are willing to do to be able to make this work as effectively as possible. By saying uh, to those that are in your life that you have to work within your home, this is my contribution. I promise that I will work from this time to this time, and then I'm going to have family time. You have to make sure that you put that time in there. Whenever we talk about harmony, you cannot imagine uh, being able to work from home without spending any time with your family. It doesn't work that way. However, if you don't put any boundaries in, you're just doing a freestyle approach, you're going to find that it's going to be very stressful. And by the way, I tried this. I tried the freestyle approach for a while, and it was very ineffective. What I found myself doing was I was trying to do everything at once. And what I was doing then is I wasn't being very present as a husband. I wasn't really being able to listen because I was trying to work. I wasn't being very present as a father because I couldn't really read the book. And I was saying things that, that frankly, looking back, kind of break my heart that I said. You know, whenever a child comes up to you and says, you know, daddy, daddy, can you read a book? And you say, no, sweetie, I'm working. I, I, I can't be bothered right now. I don't want that to be the memory and the legacy that I'll leave with my children. I don't want that to be the legacy I'll leave with my wife either, right? And saying that work is more important than you. And so what we do is we make sure that we are being very vocal and communicating openly about what our contribution is. I need to work from this time to this time, and then I will be present with you. But I need to be present at work right now. And so I have different personas. I have my work self. I have that of a father, that of a husband, and I make sure that I, I give the right time to each of those to be great at those things. Because you know what? All three of those are extremely important to me. They're vital to my happiness as a human being and my success as a person. Is I want to be great in my job. I want to be great as a husband, and I want to be great as a father. And so in order to be great at those things, you have to give them their own space and their own time. The next key that we talk about is visibility. So. Again, in the three keys of execution, we have simplicity and then visibility. Visibility is where everybody, and I'm talking work and home, they know the schedule, they know the expectations. And with this visibility piece, it's really about utilizing a schedule. It's very simple to have visibility with the way this is working. You have a schedule that everyone can see, and you communic communicate it clearly. So everyone knows from this time to this time, I am working. From this time to this time, I am at home. From this time to this time, I'm working again, and you can split it up however need be. Right? There are things you can utilize as well as little timers. Uh, again, one of my business partners mentioned that you can say things like, hey, if your children are too young to, to tell time, like mine, and say, hey, you know, at 10 o'clock, Sesame Street comes on, it's on till 11. So you say, hey, you can watch Sesame Street. Whenever Sesame Street is done, then I will be available and we're going to have lunch together. And we'll set that down. It's a visible cue. It's a communication cue to them to know that they are important and that they have a space and time in my life. And it's visible to everyone. They can see it. 
right? Many times whenever I'm working and I'm by myself, I'll set timers that are random timers. And here's a great tip for those working at home. Laundry is an amazing timer. I tend to implement micro goals in my day saying, I'm going to work for 45 minutes on this one thing. And that's it. Focus, heavy focus. So I'll start a load of laundry. And I know that whenever the buzzer goes off, the laundry's done. Boom, my 45 minutes is up. And I can then focus on things I need to. But I utilize that time to have a complete and utter focus on the right things. And it's a visibility cue for me to be able to state that everyone can know that, hey, while this is happening, I'm doing this. But then I'm available. The third key of executing at home effectively is going to be accountability. Now, accountability, as we're looking towards the corporate world, right? Uh, in the corporate world, accountability has the obvious tone of performance management, performance reviews, uh, meeting or project management, very, very you know, obvious. At home, what we believe is actually a really important thing is to have daily schedule reviews, meaning discussing at the end of the day, how did we do? Did we get done what we needed to at home? Did we get done what we needed to at work? Were we effective? And then how could we be better? And think about this, having an open conversation with those people in your personal life and saying, hey, end of the day, here are the things I need to get done. We did great today. Thank you so much for you know, helping doing this. And was I available enough? Did I help out the way that I needed to? Did I stop work whenever I said I was? Did I contribute what I said I would contribute whenever we set the expectations to begin with for doing this with our you know, family and our work and then making changes as necessary? You saw in the previous slide that sometimes you have to be flexible. This is the time to be flexible, but make sure that you are trying to facilitate as open of conversation as possible so that everyone is aligned with the expectation. Everyone is aligned and open to say, we can do this better and I need your help here. Because by opening that up, that gives you the ability to make sure that you're not going to be ineffective or struggle in that area. So the three keys of execution at home, again, are simplicity, visibility, and accountability. And by thinking through these three keys and opening communication lines with your work, that might be your direct supervisor, manager, director, et cetera, your team, your peers, and if you have direct reports with them as well, opening up that communication is going to be vital to the success of making this transition happen effectively. The same thing goes, however, with that open communication line at home. Make sure that those that you care about, anyone that lives with you, family, friends, et cetera, that they understand that you, while yes, you are home, you are also at work at this time. And that you have to have some boundaries between those two if you are going to be effective in managing both spaces. The other one, the, there's one thing I did want to bring up I didn't say, is that for visibility, I didn't really talk about visibility from the corporate perspective. Um, visibility in the corporate world uh, or in the office environment is a little bit different, right? Everyone can see what they're doing. It might be that they just see people's calendars, but you also see them in the office. But what we know is this, is that people perform better when you're keeping score. And the visibility for everyone to see what everyone is doing is vital to ensuring that everyone is aligned and moving forward on their goals. And so we want to make sure that we have that in place in our work. And we also have that visibility in place in our home while we are doing the work from home. And then, of course, accountability, ensuring that everyone is being held accountable to being their best self, including yourself, as you start this journey in working remotely, uh, perhaps for a while. It might be for a few weeks. We're not sure, right? Uh, but as we go through this, we, need, we do know this. We know that people are going to need uh, to be as effective as possible to make sure this transition is a positive one one that actually benefits organizations, the people, and the families in order to ensure that this is um, a positive at the end of the day. So with that, guys, uh, I would like to say thank you so much for being a part of this webinar. Uh, again, we are uh, focused heavily in the microlearning space, and we try to give as much value as we can in a short amount of time. This was about 40 minutes of content that we took you through. Uh, if you have any questions, I want you to feel free to email us at info at bps3keys.com. Uh, you can find out more about us there. Uh, and if you want to find out a couple of things, I will say very quickly, again, this is not a sales webinar. And so we promise not to do that. This is a value add webinar. Uh, but I will tell you this, this little picture on the side here, it says bridge the gap. What that relates to is really our, our messaging right now, which is we bridge the gap between strategy and results. You know, a lot of organizations right now have a strategy and that strategy has been really placed into a somewhat of a tailspin and a new play and a very new direction that people have to be in. And so uh, the way that you're going to bridge that gap of that strategy you have with all the changes that have happened, you still have to get the results, right? That's not an option. You still have to have the results. 
And so through us, with what we do through learning, executing and achieving, uh, we help organizations to bridge that gap effectively and actually get the results that they need. This uh, session, by the way, was on working remotely with excellence. On Thursday, we have another session, and that session is on managing remote employees and, and with excellence. And so we're going to have another webinar. We're going to be discussing tools, tips, tricks, skill sets, mindsets to be able to manage remotely effectively, whether you've managed remotely for a long time or you're brand new to it. We want to give you what you need in order to effectively do that. And a few things about our content. We do have, uh, we do live webinars of this content for organizations. So if you see this, you say, hey, this is something that more people need. Make sure you let us know uh, and we can uh, have a discussion around what it looks like to effectively implement a live webinar. We also have SCORM compliant uh, pre-recorded micro learning. So uh, it's about seven to 11 minutes. It's actually, we'll just say under eight minutes of content that is directly loaded onto your LMS in order to be able to uh, get this out to your people to help them work remotely with excellence in the future. And so again, guys, my name is Brian Cox, and I thank you so much for taking the time to be on this webinar today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to either myself, my business partners, Kent and David or Steve, uh, or you can message them in the chat. I am, however, going to stop the live share now, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day, that you stay safe and stay healthy out there. And if you ever need anything from us, we will help you bridge the gap. Have a great day, everyone.